behind the shield. Wow. Hello, everybody. Welcome into the EU qualifiers. We are here on Beyond the Summit. Of course, SEA just finished here on Beyond the Summit, but if you're looking for more SEA action, it's up on BTS2 with Gods and Lumi. That'll be on the upstairs cast. But for now, we got a lot of EU action coming your way, of course. We have eight teams battling out for one. That's right, one spot in the EU qualifiers. And it's going to start off big with, of course, Final Tribe versus OG, which I think, in my opinion, is probably one of the biggest games of this entire qualifier, I would say. It is. Uh, this here is Mott. I'll handle this. My name's Purge. Thanks. We got Lyrical here, I knew I was and we got Jurassic something. on the end. We're not important. Yeah, we're, <laughs> see, the only reason Mott didn't say anything is because we're on the schedule to only be by ourselves yes. up in the closet upstairs. And, right. Uh, I wasn't looking forward to that. But now we got a four-man couch. I'm excited to have you guys here. What do you guys think about this match? Is this the hype match? Is this the, the match to watch of the tournament? I think we're starting strong, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to seeing you know this this match in particular because I think for both of these teams, it's going to set the tone for the rest of the qualifier for them. So looking forward to it. Yeah, and uh, both are slight unknowns. Uh, Final Tribe had a lot of experience uh, playing uh, GSC miners at least, so they, they got a couple of DPC events. But in them, they didn't do great. They didn't get that close to, to getting points. They took some games off good teams, but they didn't do incredible. Um, and then OG on the other side just had to disband more or less with uh, with some roster swaps, two new players. And I'm excited to see how well they do and if they can truly make TI. For me, it's kind of weird. It's like I, I feel like the expectations in some way are higher on OG, but at the same time, I feel like that should be the case for the final tribe more because they're the squad that like has actually performed better, I would say, at the DPC. They're the squad that um, has been stuck together for a longer period of time. I, I think they should be coming into this one the favorite, but regardless of that, just because of the name OG, OG yeah. there's that feeling of like they should be the ones to take it. Yeah, I mean, you have somebody like Big Daddy Notel, you have Anna reuniting with the team, Jerax. I mean, these are all players with super high expectations. Yeah, I mean, Anna's won a couple majors, right? Like, yeah. And that was back when majors were, if anything, a bigger deal uh, based on the, the competitive lo competitiveness level. So uh, I think this is uh, maybe maybe this is what the what OG needed, and a fully new uh, a big shift instead of just a simple player sub. Yeah. So. So they made it through the open qualifiers. Uh, they did it pretty easily in the first round of the open qualifiers. They had the Anna carry, obviously, no tail switch to support, tops into the mid lane, and uh, we do have a draft. It is Final Tribe versus OG, Beastmaster, Lion Elder Titan, OG pick up Naga and Scourath Mage to start things off in this particular instance. So for, from my perspective, the OG lineup so far looks normal compared to what I've been watching in CIS the whole time, but the Final Tribe picks are weird. We haven't seen much Elder Titan. And that and a line in the first phase seems bizarre to me. Well, I, I've been watching China, so we got a little bit of everything here. Okay, and this the is more ET of a China. looks normal. The line is the one that's a little bit weird. And Beastmaster, I feel like we've been seeing all over the place. Um, the only thing that I see a little bit strange about the OG draft is that normally with the Naga Siren, we've been seeing like a Jakiro or a Disruptor, yeah. one of those to try and combo together for team fight. whereas this is, seems like more bully in the lane. I mean, Sky still has really good synergy with Naga, though. You have that into ultimate, obviously. Sky's a bit more of a lane dominator, I would say, than like your, your classic Disruptor. Jakiro is kind of in the same vein as that, but I think Skyrath has shown recently to be like, even as a late game transition, a four or five, however you play it, it's, it's still ridiculously strong. The question for me is, what are they going to put with the Scarath Mage, which I think will probably do like a bully offlane or something along those lines. They could send the Naga down there. Actually, I guess it'll be Scarath safe lane. They'll do the Naga down bottom with somebody else. I think no matter what happens, Sky is going to be relatively happy. Um, Elder Titan is uh, pretty good at trading hits, but Sky is so fast that at least he has some way to get away from it. So I feel, and against Lion, he definitely trades better. So I feel like no matter what happens with the Sky pick, he's going to be relatively comfortable with this here. Probably the reason they picked him up there I can't um, after the no, Lionel ET. I can't believe there hasn't been a Marana pick. Not picked or banned. This hero feels like the hero of the qualifiers so far. Really? Let's just be China. It feels pretty difficult, though, to pick Marana into either of these lineups, from okay. my perspective. Like, Marana excels in situations where one of the enemy teams doesn't have either a lot of catch or their laning phase is relatively weak. I'd say OG's lanes are already looking pretty strong. And Final Tribe, you know, Lion and Lane is actually pretty decent. The, the thing that Marana excels at is having really good range, so you can just out-harass. And during the mid-game, you just play the back line of the fight. But you're going to have Beastmaster and Lion on one side, and Naga Sky on the other. And mm -hmm. both of those heroes are very good against Marana. And especially now with OG now taking Peel, it seems really hard to, like for Final Tribe especially, to, to pick a Marana here. Okay. It does combo well with Final Tribe's other heroes, though. If there, if there wasn't a PL, I definitely would agree. Yeah, absolutely. If PL was not on OG right now, I would say Marana would be solid. 
because the hero functions well in a lot of situations. One of her biggest downfalls is any hero that can create like a mass amount of units or illusions. That's the one thing that she can't really deal with because yeah. people just don't build like agonims and stuff anymore. You know, and you can't you can't really clear them out that fast. Does Mjolnir not rectify that situation? It's not it, not against the PL. In my opinion, it's you good need like more. by mid game, but by late game, it's actually terrible. Like once he gets a heart and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. once once it's he has so enough tankiness, then. the illusions just don't die anymore, or I, they I, don't die fast enough. I still kind of like this game though, just because of having having like Elder Titan as a range setup. Oh, oh holy wow. crap! I was not. A, we right. had a Meepo pick earlier today. Now we have an Arc Warden. I don't know how to feel about this hero huh. because he's so weird sometimes to watch. He's also against a PL, which <laughs> also feels very bizarre. Uh, but it can be a very strong ganking hero in the late game. Okay. It's like a hero that's going to get a Shadow Blade. He's going to have a Maelstrom, obviously, at some point, Mjolnir. And then he usually buys things like Nullify or Orchid. So if he moves around and initiates on the PL, he can absolutely get solo kills. But if we're talking like a normal team fight and they both kind of engage and PL isn't necessarily caught out, then Arc Warden can be killed pretty rapidly. I, I will say it's, huh. it's interesting that Final try picked Arc Warden because OG, especially with Ana, they used to play this hero all the time, and they were the masters of it. They would split push, they would gain Whoa. an advantage, they would try to, and they had that that great late game that OG had back in the day. So I, I wouldn't say amazing Arc Warden advantage. I don't remember the exact word you used because it never seemed to work amazing to me <laughs> as a hero. It was like they were trying so hard to make the hero work. Be uh, like I, I felt like what I saw, what they liked about it was like, we can delay the game so long because we can use magnetic field on towers when people siege, and then we can cast it again, and then we can cast it again. It takes much longer to, to high ground. But past that, it felt like it had issues to me. It was like putting a lot of farm into a hero that just doesn't gank as well as like a Slark, for example. just felt better to have a hero like that yeah. instead than of, of an Arc Warden. I think it's going to be hard to find him, too, nowadays. Like, you, you look at this lineup, they don't really have that great, like, initial catch. Like, right now, they literally have no stuns um, except for Naga Ultimate. And I, I feel like it, Arc Warden's not necessarily, like, an elusive hero, but, like, you do need to be able to con control the Tempest double because otherwise it's just going to kill you late game. Is he even good in lane? Like, because uh, everyone's doing dual lanes, right? Like, he's I feel like he's okay. He's got good stats. He has bad damage, but his nukes are good. Does he dual lane here with like an Elder Titan? Do they still solo? Send I, don't, I don't even know. Like nobody plays Arc Warden these days. I feel like it's it's definitely interesting. I mean, in my opinion, it's just a difference of play style. Like Final Tribe are gonna want to go for more picks. They're not gonna look to directly fight into what OG have. I mean, they've taken their patented Brewmaster. They've played this hero since I think the the very first iteration. But for me personally, Arc Warden is the I'm gonna pick on the supports and potentially kill the brew. If that hero is ahead very very strong it can just pressure the map on its own and if you don't have people in position ready to kill him then like kind of what gabe was speaking to he's, he's not necessarily like really good at escaping but he plays the map so i, I think it's going to be if final tribe can get what they want out of it using the beastmaster for vision you have elder titan to disengage with get a stomp on the back line try to run away don't really over commit to fighting og 5v5 because i think it's going to be tough you know the other thing they could maybe do if final tribe are trying to do some weird stuff with this You've now got two different, like, attack speed uh, oriented heroes. You've got Inner Beast Aura, and then you've also got the Magnetic Field. Conceivably, they could try and, like, do some early pushing with this lineup, yeah. too. Um, it's, it's like, a, a different way than we've seen Arc Warden played before. But I'm looking at this lineup right now from OG, and I guess the Brew, it, it kind of deals with it a little bit. But that's something else that they're going to need to be wary of. They don't have much D push. Oh, my God. Okay. Topson Invoker. He's played this a lot recently. It's like this in Pugnet from what I've seen. Yeah. I think it's great um, with the Nogonet. Nogonet can set up Skywrath ulti, set up Sunstrike. Um, they can Brewmaster pressure. It's going to be not the easiest in the laning stage, but the Final Tribe heroes are all pretty vulnerable. Like AT, Line, Arc Warden, those guys are very burstable with a little bit of pressure. I feel like the Invoker, uh, if he's laning against Arc Warden, should be able to outlane him. It's just way higher damage. Um, well, Arc Warden doesn't have good armor. In the past, Topson has done it Quas Wex, too. Yeah, he was the Meteor Hammer Invoker. So That's I'm not sure if he still does that or not, though. Oh, that was him? Yeah, yeah that was with him. With, like, the Tornado. Yeah, okay. Tornado yeah. Meteor Hammer. That was Topson. Did you guys uh, ever watch those games? Yeah. It actually worked really well for him when he did it. I, I don't know if that's what he's going to do now. Like, I do think there is some synergy with the Naga. But it depends on if they want to control or not. Like, Quas Wex Invoker is all about control early to mid game just being completely dominant there are low base mana pool heroes on final tribe too so tornado emp destroys Beastmaster, it destroys hey, elder titan even arc warden to a certain extent so for me personally i think the main reason they picked this hero is because final tribe do not have a lot of reach it's pretty much just lion if he gets a blink and we haven't seen Beastmasters by anything but what? shadow blade what is happening in this game oh this got weird alchemist okay. i think they're gonna push with this i think this is gonna be a safe lane alk and then or and try and like accelerate really quickly? Maybe not. I don't know. What the hell is a final tribe doing? I got no idea. 
I think I think Elk might go more of a Shadow Blade build myself. You wanna you have like three Shadow Blade heroes on that team. <laughs> like, you wanna you wanna build three Shadow Blades? Let's do I it. Mean, that, why not just have like obscene map controls that not? You just have everything? like three Ricky Marus running around the map. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all yeah. Yeah, trees are gonna be valuable, but that yeah. doesn't mean that they're not good at. at <laughs> no, no, no. Like, I, I know what you're saying. You know? I, I kind of I see where you're coming from. I'm I'm really actually no idea what this Elk is gonna do. It's either that or the he'll go typical Radiance Octarine build and throw stuns every like three seconds. That the, yeah. that's actually probably a decent way to do with the PL. Because you have so many stunts, right. and they're so low cooldown, and they have the big AoE, he's just going to toss them on PL constantly, and maybe it'll give them enough team fight control to deal with it. And they've got tons of minus armor between Alk and Elder Titan Aura. Might might be a decent solution. The real strat is the late game Lion Agonim's pool for the oh, Illusion Clear. Oh, snap. And that too? Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Huh. This is a really interesting draft from, uh, from Final Tribe, though. Elk can also get 30% cleave at 20. Normally, I'd never say you'd get that over the, the unstable concoction stun. But against a PL, that's three-fourths of a Battle Fury cleave-wise. So I mean, there's a lot of different ways they can go, and I'm excited to see so many new heroes all of a sudden. Good to I see an Arc and an Elk the same game. I, I really think they're going to try and abuse this like attack speed, because now you've got like Alchemist, obviously, Chemical Rage, Insane. Um, we've also got the Magnetic Field. we also got Inner Beast Aura. Like, if he just builds a couple of damage items, he's yeah. going to be doing so much damage in these fights. And as you guys mentioned, they've got the stuns, they got the lockdown. And if he yeah. gets the base oh, attack time perk, yes. that would put his BAT at 0.8 <laughs> oh, at level God. 3, which <laughs> is Slap insane. That's like twice as fast as, as any other average hero. If you think about the Alchemist pick overall, though, it, it looks a bit greedy at first. But if you think about what he's going to be laning against, it's an Invoker. It like, is a Quas Invoker, Invoker too. does not really dominate the lane. It's it's interesting to say, but Invoker as Quas Wex does better against very aggressive mids than he does against mids that just want to trade farm because he can abuse the Quas regen to trade effectively. But against Alchemist, once he hits six, that's not going to work anymore. So if you're laning against like a queen or a Lena or something and you're Quas Wex Invoker, you feel a lot more comfortable because you can abuse that regen to trade with. But the Alk doesn't care about trading with you. He just wants to hit the creeps. Yeah. And your base damage is not that good. So the Alchemist pick actually makes sense in the isolated 1v1 if they were assuming the top zone was going to be going Quas Wex. And I've, I've watched a couple of his replays, and I tried this out myself, and it just felt so bad in the mid lane because I had so much trouble last hitting. Maybe I picked yeah. the wrong pass to do it, but like it felt like I couldn't get last hits. And then my mid game was like very reliant on me casting my spells correctly and doing good rotations. Yeah, but so. Tornado EMP is not that hard to land. Like, Well, maybe it, I'm just real bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it, but from my perspective, because I've played hundreds of games of Invoker and a lot of Quas Wakes too, it's, it is very difficult to last it. But if you're given a melee matchup, he should be able to get his phase relatively quick. Sometimes people go double null, sometimes they go Aquila phase. He went and Bassy. If, yeah, he, yeah he, he did go Bassy, so he might go back for the Aquila. But the the main thing about it is that once you get to like five, no one's ever pushing you out of lane. And that's, that's when you can start to get farm. I, I remember there was a while where it was the Alk versus Invoker mids too, and the thing that you would always have is that Bassy for the extra armor when the uh, Acid spray goes down. Right. So just trying to stay alive for that. And this is the the mess up of the last hits. Even just with that early point there in the tornado. He's getting. He did head. it for the range creep, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When I when I watched his replays a few times, he would actually cast tornado two or three times just to guarantee last hits. Because otherwise, you miss. You just get too far behind for focusing All on right. the right clicks. That's first blood. Just has spark wraith. A couple of auto attacks as well with the earth spike. So. That's Good job. Definitely a really cool thing about him as a, as a dual laner here is that pretty much no matter what happens in the lane, he's going to be able to almost instantly throw a Spark Rift because the cast range is so high. And it's 100 damage for 80 mana. That's a really good way to contribute to trading. I mean, what do you even max on Arc Warden right now in terms of this laning phase for your abilities? Uh, probably, I, I would get probably two fast flux myself just to double the, the damage, and then I would probably max Spark Rift. Maybe getting one magnetic field because it's better now. But yeah. It's against double melee, though. I don't... Like, if you get netted, it's really hard to make that ability useful, I feel. That's true. But we'll see. I mean, it's, you know, it's 50 mana to cast it. It's a 20 second cooldown. Maybe that feels better. It, and it's also the attack speed. You could ar definitely argue for it to uh, yeah. be you getting a kill. So I think you might get one, but no more than that in the laning stage of that. You know, some fun walking to bot rune picks up a DD here. Arrow is so. just going to miss out on this, but he, he pushed the wave under the tower anyway, so he'll be able to get back and not really miss anything for Arrow. And Invoker is not going to get any last hits as soon as he gets back yep. to lane, so he's just gonna this is not all bad. Out CS him. Level 2 acid spray, level 1 Grievous Grief for now. He can just dispel a DD, though. You know, that's a damn a damn good point, as he does have... There it is! Plus. Hey, look at that! <laughs> Countered! <laughs> Now, Era, what you think now? now yeah, like, but this, this is the point that we were trying to illustrate, right? Like, these heroes are both just going to get farmed. 
Yeah. And that, in some degree, that I think benefits Final Tribe a bit more because if Alchemist gets the lane, and no one's gonna rotate to kill this Alk. Like it, it, they can, but what are you bringing? Naga doesn't really do that much damage. You'd have to bring the Sky and the Naga to be like really certain you're gonna get that kill, and that's a really heavy commitment. I'm I'm really curious as to what Arrow's gonna buy as his like first big item. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I feel like it's gonna tell us a lot about how they want to play this game because you can go super late with like the Arc Warden and the Alchemist, but I feel like that's also a little bit scary against PL. Uh, I'm not sure really who care out carries the other there, um, but PL late game can just be really difficult to deal with. Yeah, I, I don't think it's gonna be any trouble for Alk, I guess, just because he farms so fast, you can buy Battle Fury and not have it be like a big gold sink. Um, there's also bounty runes to think about, especially if his team gets good map control. Taking control of uh, bounty runes using Spark Wraiths means he's going to accelerate even faster. It's 3.5 times gold right now for, for bounty rune multipliers. And that's going to mean, like, if they get four bounty runes in the mid game, he's going to get 2,000 gold. That's that's actually insane. Yeah, that's going to be nuts. Flux on, to, on Mad. He might just be dead here. One more auto attack, and he's actually going to avoid the Spark Wraith. Dude, nice stick, too. Earth Spike, though, it looks like No Tail might fall. Oh, nice to... Uh, yeah, and Snare comes out, haze. and I actually can't believe both of them are going to survive. That's that Drunken Haze, I think, Pablo saved his life. actually backed off there, too, yeah. which is interesting. Like, he he ran backwards and didn't, like, throw... I think he could have gotten at least one or two more times. He was afraid of Riptide, but it's level one. I don't think he was that low in HP. Uh, I think he actually made a bit of a mistake there, but it's not a big deal. Well, anyway, they pushed them out of lane, which is really uh, still good news for the final tribe. I don't know. Do do you still get? Do you still think about Midas on Arc Warden if you're having a good enough lane, or is that something you, they have yeah. to pass? I think you have to have. You that. have to get Midas. There's there's no way. It's it's the hero that can abuse it more than any other hero. I think. Yeah. Safe to say. Although that's the old, you know, Arc Warden build, and they're doing funky things with this. I, I feel just, like with no their way. pick. I like mean, yeah. you, it's anybody. It's like playing. It, you get a you get a double cooldown. Anything that gives you a cooldown is what you want to abuse with Arc Warden. Like he might get it, he might get it after he's gonna get a after Aqua probably, so his laning is okay. But there's no way you skip it, truly. All right, they finally get the kill on Matt as he returns back to lane. I think he TP'd in too. I'm not sure if he has one. If he, yeah, I think he TP'd into lane, so that's pretty bad for him. Meanwhile, they're gonna get Jarax in the top lane as well. Jonas will get dropped, so it's a one for one trade. But uh, that's actually big for the PLOG. They get the kill on the Beastmaster, who's doing pretty well in this lane, and then Anna secures that, which is pretty nice. So is Anna. Uh, sl uh, Completely, he's playing one now, correct? He's not yeah, playing yeah. anymore. From what I've seen in, in the open qualifiers, yes. Oh. It's been slowly tops in mid lane. I mean, they might switch things up if there's like an ember or something, you know, the, the, one of the signature Ana heroes. Yeah. But uh, at least for now, that's what's going on. And a good bit of damage here on the Yonison fam, trying to hide away. And he's dead again. It's like the no doppelganger. That was nice. And he's just dead again, just like that. And they could try to turn on Hanskin now. Yeah, he's going to get chased down. They have no mana for Spirit Lance, though. He does have stick charges. He won't use them. Jarex is going to chase him down, throw some more Arcane Bolts with a double mill tally. He avoids the stomp. No, he actually gets hit by it. He was just on the edge. He's going to get auto-attack twice, might die. But if Hanskin stays, he will certainly die. He doesn't want to trade his life away, so he'll back up. He's not going to go for the kill on Jarex, which is smart. So I, I think he could have killed Jarex, but it definitely would have resulted in Anna killing him back. Yes. It's probably not worth it. I think that was the safer move. They're not going to use the Shrine? OK, he's going to walk back home instead. Not being greedy about it. Yeah. I think if the Beastmaster needed to be healed too, they'd use a shrine. But you don't like as a four or five, you don't want a solo shrine. Feels really bad. Is Eric going armlet? He had Helm of the Iron Will. I think he actually is picking yeah. up an armlet yeah. first. So, like going back to the mid matchup, the thing that I I really feel is going to be the most important is what Topson does with his early game, because if you're playing against an Alka and you know that hero is free farming against you, and he definitely knows. You have to make some kind of influence in the game. Like he's going straight for the urn. This is pretty standard Quaswex stuff. What is he going to be able to do? Like, is he going to go bot? Is he going to kill the Arc Warden? Probably the highest value target that he can reasonably get. Because once that Alk hits six, you do not have a lot of damage. So you need to, like, crush that safe lane, I feel, if you're OG. It might be really hard to even kill him anyways. There's the, the re re latest addition to Alk was the Dispel with ult, so... Yeah, that's true. Ult Snap or something like that, making it harder to get a kill. That TP oh, was that almost was... amazing. He almost made it out of that, but he's going to get dropped down. That's a pretty big kill. They smoked for that with the Skyrath Mage just to get bottom, and it almost looked pretty bad there, but they do end up getting the kill, and that's Frost dead. Interesting build on Jarex, actually. Two points in Bolts and two in Concussive No Silence yet. Just yeah. wants to maximize his yeah. damage output and not worry about the timing, I guess. It's this is pretty standard. I mean, I, I feel like I haven't seen this before. Surely everybody, almost everybody goes like 1-2-1 one, one right now. I've seen like. Max Concussive Shot a lot recently where you get the one in Bolt, one in the Ancient Seal. I just mean that he's skipping Ancient Seal so far. Yeah. I think right. that's that's unusual. I think against the very, like, escape-driven heroes that, like, Marana, for example, if you're playing against that hero, you would definitely get a value point into Silence. 
But since none of the heroes on uh, TFT actually have an escape, I think it makes sense to just maximize your DPS because you're landing against Beastmaster or Elder Titan. Like, the silence is not going to do anything against those heroes. This Arcord is like left. He's over in the jungle mid right mid. now, and they're yeah. trying to take him down. This is a cool rotation. He has no ulti for arrow. The tornado EMP is going to hit. He already has no mana, although he has a soul ring to work with, but it's not going to matter anyway. He's cold snapped. He does have his range drop. He'll die anyway. No tail getting chased down. He throws up the Riptide, and they almost get the kill on Hanskin. In fact, they do with the Arcane Bolt, but Thompson gets dropped down. Pablo comes in, throws up the Earth Spike. Now they've got the roar with Jonas. They're going to clean this up. It's going to be three dead for OG. They turn into a two for three trade at the end of it. Good TPs and reactions from the final tribe there. Did yeah. he get an urn charge from that on the Invoker? He had to, right? He did, yeah. yes. Yeah, he's he got to. First. Okay. So hope a little bit. that was really unfortunate timing because the gank, the Beastmaster was already six by the time they went uh, by they went on that one, so he was able to get a bonus kill. And Thompson tanked so much damage there. Yeah. I'm surprised he let himself get hit that much. He's like under the tower too, I think. Yeah, he was, for sure. That's pretty brutal. But he is building straight into Spirit Vessel, which is... Amazing against Alk if you can yeah. get it off after the ult. Yeah. That's true. It'll take him a little bit to get there. Of course, the Alk, even with that death, he's still on top of the net worth as he should be. He's not at armlet yet, but he's close. I mean, does he want to just keep farming when he gets this armlet? Does he want to be involved? What does he want to do at this he point? He doesn't have any stuns, so he's definitely just going to keep farming. Yeah. I don't know how this guy contributes without any points in a concoction. He'll probably get one in a moment. The uh, the extra levels of Grievous Greed are not that amazing right now, to be honest. They're like a, a small, oh, nice steal. small increase. Jerex is just screwing with them. They actually have everybody rotating in. Thompson really wants this kill. He has the ultimate running now. The EMP is going to hit. They have a nice stomp from Hanskin, though, that'll split up the fight and stop yeah. them from regressing. He doesn't want to commit. Once he, once he did the EMP, he, he started playing back really far. As soon as Hanskin's there, wants to play safe. He's going to do some damage to Hanskin, though. Throws the, the urn down with the cold snap. Concussive he might be dead. Yeah, he might be dropped here. He's going to try to get the stomp. No way. Too much damage coming in. Honestly, very I, I honestly think this build on Jerex is really interesting. He's actually making an arcane bolt now. Just, uh, I guess, just saving the 80 mana is kind of a lot, I guess. So, like, it probably increases his combo damage by a decent amount, but it's probably less than just an extra point of Arcane Bolt. You know, like, in the long term, he's going to save mana not casting Ancient Seal every time he goes in. Yeah, for sure. I think it's also for, like, the elongated chases, because they're going to have uh, Quaswex Invoker, so you can chase for a really long time, given the vision of Arcane Bolt as well. And you saw, like, the vision that you get there, Topson, that was able to help him get the kill on yeah, the other Titans. That's a good so. point. I do feel like this is going to be a bit of a tough one, though. Like, uh, looking more and more at this dispels on the, the Alk ultimate, like, that completely destroys Quaswex Invoker. I, I feel like... Well, the, that's only if you let him use it, like, as the Cold Snap goes off, you know right. what I mean? That's a good point. If, he, if you force him to Chemical Rage and you Cold Snap him and Vessel him, he's still going to die. But what forces you to Chemical Rage in this? Just getting hit by pretty much anything, I guess. If you get lanced, if you get netted, like you're going to you're gonna want to cast it. Okay. I do like the Soul Ring pickup yeah. for the Alk, because that means he can make sure that he can play at zero mana and still get that ulti I mean, off. he's been playing at zero mana for what feels like the entire last five minutes of the game, and he's going to continue to be at zero mana, so it's a really good item. Now, he's going to get killed, though. Mr. Oh, Flair, it's so ring. much damage. No Soul Ring. They're going to stomp three, but there's no follow-up there. And that's another out kill, and that's really big for them to keep this game in check and also try to push into the tier one tower. They still have the Bruce Blitz, too, if they want to try to take a fight. No song sort of initiation or counter initiation for them, but they'll push them back for now. They do have rotating over Pablo, who was smoked up. He does have Finger. Maybe he can find Topson. It's going to be tricky. I think they're just going to back up. He's really maybe far up on the tower. Yeah, I think he's maybe going to be dead here. Axe is coming nice. in. He just played way too far up onto the tower there. And they're going to get another. The Roar comes out. Brewmaster does have that ulti, but he's going to get wow. dropped down. Jonas gets a double kill. Now No Tail has to run. He has Song. He just queued it up, and he's going to use it maybe momentarily. Ooh. Earth Spike avoided, which means he might be able to get back to the tower without having to use Song, which I think is just kind of big for No Tail there. That I don't think he would have used it even if he would have died. Yeah. It's not worth it him casting a song just to save his own life. But yeah, that was unfortunate. That no that Naga doesn't even have boots, right? Yeah, he yeah. just missed the stun. Yep. Just the win lace. It was still a nice play to be able to catch out the invoker like that, though. Yeah, he was waiting under the, under the trees for so long. He had a lot of options there, but yeah, uh, OG just a little too confident with the rotation, thinking they had everything under control, but uh, not no vision, basically. They had a ward between the tier 1 and tier 2, but they didn't have any of the other space. Uh, the sentry may be dewarding it, but um, that was a big fight there. And by the way, while this is all happening, we haven't really talked about Anna, but he has his defusal now. He's stopping the net worth ahead of the Alchemist at this point, which is pretty good wow. for him. So they're having a pretty good time, all things considered. But And Vessel's done too, I all think. All right, they them. just blue split, Bruce split on Frost, and he, they killed him. And Jerax might die for this, but they're fine with that trade. And they'll probably just get out of the Brewmaster, I think. Although he might get caught here. There's three heroes here. They don't have Roar for another 10 seconds, but he's probably dead anyway. 
still, they did kill Frost, and they stopped that Midas timing even further. Still, the Alki got to be worried about. Like you said, he's... Oh, oh never mind. You don't oh, need to be God. worried about him at all. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that Vessel Man putting in work. Oh, Lord. Except I, two I more actually feel like too. you might just need to save Chemical Rage for that now, which sucks. Like It's, I, it's hard. You can't do that. Yeah. The, if they just, like, Tornado EMP and he gets ensnared and Riftide it, he's got very low armor. He's taking damage. Like. He needs to either like somehow find a way to fit a Manta into his build or a BKB or someone on this team needs to get him a Lotus. What a deny. That was nice. That was with the tornado coming out too. Or he could just get BKB, I guess, but Yeah, but you don't want an early BKB against these heroes. Like early BKB feels so yeah. bad because by the late game, you're gonna just get destroyed by the Skyrath and the Invoker even more. And it's only like thirteen minutes in. You already feel kinda questionable going late game against OG's lineup. You buy too early of a BKB, and that could just end your game. They have finger back up again? Yeah. No tail signal. No tail so be might be dead. If he gets roared, he's definitely... And he's just got a song. Wow, they're going to go for this. It's only Beastmaster in the line. They catch in the song, but they're going to try to find the skill in the Beastmaster at least. They rotate Ana in, and he is mega dead. The roar comes out, does nothing. He gets Mystic Flared. Pablo is going to attempt to TP, and he will be successful in that. The Stomp comes out. Hanskin is going to try to run as well. So they only get the Beastmaster with the song... But uh, it is, I think, Anna getting the kill. Actually, it was Strax that picked it up. But I, like, I like the way they played that. Um, you know, no Tail is basically trying to bait out the roar to get him closer. And as he approached that far, he just gets to use Song to set up an easy TPs. Definitely the safest way for those fights to go. Just make him uh, overextend under your tower, and then everything is going to be all right. Man, this game feels pretty good for OG. They have a 3k lead. They've gotten a couple of towers. They now have the blink on the Brewmaster, which means they can jump in and start fighting even more aggressively with this Diffusal Blade for PL. They've stopped the, the Arc Warden from doing anything. He's still not at his might. He's had 14 and a half minutes into the game, although he did when he did go phase a kill one. But It's actually surprising that his timing is that late because it felt like they were doing well in the in the laning phase. Yeah. They got multiple kills. Maybe they were being pressured harder than uh, than I thought. Just think it's that Arc Warden doesn't accelerate that fast outside of Midas. And he's still pretty vulnerable as a, as a hero. He's got two deaths to his name, too. Yeah, That's but they haven't even... I mean, he's died twice, but they haven't really focused his lane that hard. They, they prioritized the Alchemist over him. Like, they were wrapping around, like, tower diving multiple times before they decided to emphasize anything on him. Yeah, I didn't keep an eye on him, to be honest. I, I was a little surprised to see him behind as well. Uh, Bounty Rune's uh, just spawning. Uh, went 2-2. Two and two. It does kind of feel like they're making a, a little bit of space, though, for uh, Dalk to try and get online. He's getting towards that Radiance. It's slower than we had previously. Pablo also is getting close to his Blink, I want to say. Yeah, he's got yeah, it. He just got it right now. So that's another nice timing where you can make some stuff happen. I think that Ana's still not uh, tanky enough that he's going to be able to survive like a big initiation from the Lion and Beastmaster. And I think the big thing for me, they're taking control of this top half of the map for OG. Like... They're essentially choking them out at this point. But down bottom, they have some room, which is where the Alchemist is farming. If they can ward up for OG down bottom, maybe they can control that area too. But for now, they're doing a really good job anyway of making sure that the Alc and, uh, both the Alc and the Arc Warden don't have that much room to, to farm at this point. They pop a smoke on the mid lane. It's uh, all the cores, more or less. Uh, PL with Brewmaster and no tail as well. He's no going to break smoke on Pablo, though. Pablo's ready for this one. This can be killed. Jumps in. What he actually hex. doesn't get off the Primal Split because of the Hex. That was nice. The Finger comes out. Naga's dead, but the Bruce Split still goes off anyway. Earth Splitter comes through, and here's the PL. Jonas is in trouble. He does have the Shadow Amulet. I'm not sure they have detection. I don't think they do. They did Dispel. They're still going to keep going here. They're looking for Hanskin. He's going to get dropped down. The Tornado should bring them both down at this point, and it will. Ooh. Double kill for Topson. Can they continue to chase? Cyclone should be back up, and it is. They're looking for Alchemist. He does have the Armlet and the Chemical Rage, but he's going to get dove by Anna and the rest of the crew. Pablo gets diffused up. He might make it out, and he's going to blink away. But Era is most certainly dead. Mag magnetic field comes out. He is going to get dropped down more likely because of the spirit vessel, and he is dead. And now Pablo's going to chase. They're just diving the tier three tower at this point. They're owning. Oh my god. It's done by Pablo, and they played that pretty well considering they had the high ground, but only killing the Naga Siren made things a little hard there. It's just unfortunate because they threw out all their damage onto the, the one hero, and it guarantees the split was going to go off no matter what. Like Pablo, he had no choice but to use finger on the Naga because yeah. it wouldn't have killed the brew, and they had no other damage. It's just an unfortunate circumstance. It seemed at first like they had the advantage because they had the high ground and saw what was coming, but yeah. as soon as they didn't have enough in the tank to kill Mad, that fight was just a foregone conclusion. Yeah, if Beastmaster was set up there with the line, it would have been great, but yeah, they can't all sit around waiting for these these chance opportunities. It's like there's like 
four good team fighters on OG, and then you've got like kind of one, two on the side of the final tribe, and there's leveraging that into it. I uh, want to give a quick shout out also, uh, while we have a break in the game, BTS2, Entity versus Sterling Global Dragons, that's Illumian Gods. On BTS4, there's Fnatic versus TNC Tigers, which is being casted by Zyclops, and then on BTS5, Kingwin versus Wind and Rain, the other European game that's going to be casted by Nomad as well. So uh, if you want to go check those games out, feel free, or you can keep on seeing OG just run over the final tribe in this one. I mean, they're doing a great job. 4K lead now. 17 minutes in, almost 18 minutes of the game. They're looking to clean up the rest of the towers. Every they have complete control. Everybody on OG doing a really good job just staying off map, basically. They're pushing the lane barely. Thompson's constantly looking for kills of any cores over. He's going to be able to cover Ana and Dev tier 2 bottom if needed. Frost is thinking about trying to defend this, but he's got to be scared, man. They're just, look at how they're, far they're Thompson is behind him. Oh my god. Ghost walk, <laughs> Spirit Vessel, Frost is just running for his life at this point. Spirit Lane comes out. Look at him. Oh god. Oh, there's nothing Jeez. they can do. <laughs> That's brutal. This is kind of what we talked about during the draft, though, is like the Quaswex Invoker, he's just a fast version of Invoker. He doesn't sit around and farm. Like, he goes in, he's behind enemy lines looking for kills, he offers a lot of control, and when you have the damage to back it up, and you have these two heroes like Alf and Arcord, and they both need a tremendous amount of space, you are relying very heavily on your Beastmaster line and your ET to really just be the driving force of your game. But when OG has a super active mid, like a Quaswex Invoker, you just don't have enough the manpower to fend off all these attacks. Well, you talk about that too. It's even the lion. Like the lion needs stuff to come online. He needs that blink dagger before he can start fighting. Now they're starting to be able to make moves, but they're six thousand net worth behind, which yeah. is why I kind of thought that like, all right, maybe they're gonna go for like one of these medallion solar crest builds for the elk. But oh. the hex is there. They just it a little too late. They are gonna get off the air splitter. The finger comes out. They might be able to get this kill. Thompson walks back into it, but he's gonna heal up with the spirit vessel. He will stay alive, and they actually get the kill on the line. Here oh, comes Jonas. Saw. They have the song coming out, and now. Thompson saying, fight me accordingly, and they're going to look for this kill onto Era, and boy, is he in trouble. He's out of mana completely, so the damage is at least not that much from Diffuser, but he dies anyways because Ana is huge, and... Uh, Arma, no. Yeah. Doesn't work out. No. They almost got the Invoker. He's full HP already somehow. It's the probably spirit like one Spirit and Vessel and Quas. Yeah. That's sick. It's getting 11 HP per second from each Quas <laughs> point, so 45 <laughs> HP per second right now. And that's, that's before insane. Spirit Vessel, too. <laughs> that, that's insane. That's, uh, it's actually working out very, very well here. Just a, a, a greedy lineup. Maybe they needed somebody other than Arc Warden, but man, they've just been taking it to Final Tribe here. They just needed what they're either position one or two to be able to make moves. I think that's the real issue, is that neither one of those heroes from a core capacity go across the map to do anything. They both just sit in their lanes if it creeps. I mean, it seemed like a pretty cool idea to pick Alchemist against a laner that you know is not really going to pressure him that much. That's yeah. good on paper. But if you don't have anyone else to make moves on your team besides your supports, and OG have this really fast-paced uh, playing Invoker, and then they also have Peel, who still can go to fights very early, because he gets a defusal at, like, what, 12, 13 minutes, I think, his yeah. defusal blade timing was. At that point, Ana can already fight, because he's a Peel. Yeah. So you, you have these heroes who just go, well, we need like 15 minutes, and OG are just not giving him the time. You no. know, one thing, though, they've got high ground defense out the wazoo. You, you look at this yeah. lineup from Radiant. Like, it's one thing they do quite well. I mean, if they can even get one kill and delay, and if they just take a fight outside the base, they're going to do that. They lose the Beastmaster across the map, but they do find the Brewmaster at least, so they're going to get some more room for Arrow, but... Yeah, it's, it. it's off lane for off lane, and it, a trade at this point is pretty much the best that I think Final Tribe's going to be able to do. Unless OG make a mistake pushing high ground like you were talking about. They do have really good high ground defense heroes. But that's going to require a very big misplay. I mean, this is an Aegis PL who almost has Butterfly SNY defusal at 21 minutes. That's ridiculous. <laughs> He's got 40% more net worth than an Alchemist. Oh, jeez. This guy is massive. I love the SNY this game, too. If you're pressuring this hard, you just want this big movement speed advantage. He doesn't care about silences. He just wants to. <laughs> I mean, win look at the all illusions the go. Fights. They just cold snap him. They throw the spear. Oh he's actually God. dead to the illusions in Spirit Vessel. I think he's going to stick up and stay alive barely for now. He might make it into the well. He will. They did get the kill on Thompson, actually. He falls. That's a lot of gold. Instantly buys yeah. buy back for that. <laughs> Lion trying to get back to defend. Doing his best. They're, I don't know. I think they can get the tier 3. They do have Aegis on Ana. They're going to hit the stomp, though. Oh. Maybe a chance. Can they step this up? They have Roar. Frost is going to come in with the magnetic field. He uses his Tempest double, of course. They hex up Ana. They should be able to bring him down. Potentially, he doppelgangers away. Where's the Roar? The Roar didn't come out. It's, it's still an Aegis. He doesn't yeah, want to waste it. Oh, good yeah, call, exactly. good call, good call. And uh, Astra will come, but 
Unless they hit a stomp. Oh, they have the spark raid. Run right away. Excellent <laughs> doppelganger. Nice, nice. He really does not want to waste that. Just, no. It's really awesome if he can save it, too. I guess it doesn't make sense. It, it sucks not at least being able to burn that Aegis since there's still, like, what, two minutes left on it or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two. Yeah, two. Three. Almost three minutes. Yeah, so. Well, they defended a bit either way. Uh, he does pick up the unstable concoction cooldown finally. I was unsure which, he, which way he'd go. Uh, but I guess if you're not getting attack speed, probably worth it at this point. He's got Radiance. That's something. Queuing up his Manta next. The Radiance is going to feel pretty lackluster, though. Yeah. It's it's not going to be the super early Radiance into walking at people and being able to dominate a team fight that Alchemist really wants. He's going to walk in with his ult on, get cold snapped and vesseled, and go, I want out of this game. <laughs> That's pretty much how it's going to go down. Yeah. We've seen a lot of Spectres in the last couple days that got Radiance earlier than this. It's, uh, it's a rough life out here for an Alk. He had a really good laning phase. It's just like eventually OG decided, hey, we're going to prioritize mid, and we're just going to run four heroes at your Alchemist over and over again. Yeah. There was nothing they can do to respond to that. I feel like the one hero that's been f making Final Tribe's lineup a little hard is maybe Elder Titan. Like, I think Pablo's been doing a really good job online, but Elder Titan does not feel as strong um, in these like early mid rotations. Like He's got some disable and some lane trading, but he just doesn't do th as much pressure, it feels like, to me. When I've seen seen it, oh, we'll have to hold that thought as Pablo is likely dead here. He gets off an Earthspike at least, and a Hex, but uh, they need to get out if you're TFT. Yeah, they're just going to TP. Jonas will stay up here for a little bit, try to push into the Tier 1 tower. They've only gotten the bottom tower, and that's the only objective they've secured so far in this game. And Aero is going to man fight Anna, and it's uh, not going to go that well. Anna is going to be able to get away. They do throw up the Flux, which backs him off. They can slow play this as much as they want. Like, as soon as Anna gets the heart, that's, I think, going to be the point where Final Tribe are, are really pushed into either making a decision, do we go out and try to fight, or we just let them siege, because once that PL has the regen from heart, you're going to lose your buildings. So it's 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 hard. It's e obviously, it's easy to say, just fight them, but much harder to do in practice. Yes. Given the, the circumstances. Spell. The magnetic field. I think pops the on this. That's it, nice. It's slowing them down for sure. They are still getting close to taking a tier 3 tower, even without that hard contrast banana. Tornado is going to miss. Yeah, they, they might just take it here, actually. Although Magnetic Field will make it a lot harder, but Anna's just going to sit inside of it and just siege the tower. And they'll probably take it. No cliff available. And Anna's just going to dive, and Jonas has to damage. This is insane. He actually is doing so much work. Plus Alacrity, too. Oh my god. It's mainly attack speed right now, since it's mostly points and wax, but. I mean, that's great for PL. That's not, that's not even true. He's got five points in Exhort already. He's level 18 that? on He's got Agonim's What the too, hell? So. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's transitioned <laughs> oh my very god. This, game. this is a... I have not been pressured at all Invoker. Anna is just... He's feeding his Aegis away. He does not care at this point. He knows it was going to be gone in two seconds anyways. And they're going to split, and they're just going to oh, take this fight. Good Earth Spike, though. They drop the finger. PL is going to get caught, potentially, this song. Oh. Can they turn it around? He's still super low. The Flux, he's not going to die to it. He needs to back up, though. They're just going to disengage now. They don't want to lose this PL. They want to make sure they can get the Heart of Trask. They're going to cycle it up the line in the meantime. I don't know if they can chase the Brewling. The Earth Brewling is the closest. They're going to turn, maybe. Anna is pretty low, but he's going to jump back in anyway. Oh, Hanskin is just dead to the cold snap and the auto attack. That's a godlike spree for Anna. Topson's going back in the meatball, the EFP combination. Roar on two on Illusion. Ooh. That does not feel very good for TFT. And OG are wrecking this first game of the EU qualifiers. I mean, they've just been firmly in control from the beginning all the way up until this point. It has just been... TFT scrambling to slow things down and they almost get it a couple times, but Anna's doing whatever he wants this game. All, all the disables, more or less from Final Tribe, have to be put on him to, for him to even die. I, I kind of wanted to talk about the other Titan. Like, it, from my perspective, the hero has two primary functions. One is like a uh, disengage or a counter initiator to a certain degree. Like, if you're playing against Void, he's nice because he never commits to the fight and you can stomp when the Chrono comes out, right? Seems really cool. And then the other way is you synergize it with, like, high burst damage of the magical variety. So, like, Zeus is one that comes to mind. Yeah. But when you're not picking him in one of those two situations, I feel like, to some degree, he's like a, a four that you want to counter pick with, not open with, at least in this patch. Yeah. Well, and I, when we've been seeing it in China, oftentimes you've also sometimes been seeing the PL banned out in the right. first phase because of it, because you're never going to hit a stomp on a PL. Or yep. you pair it together with some really hard initiation, which they tried to do, but that hard initiation was something that needs like a blink dagger to really get online. Sometimes we've been seeing it with the Sand King, and you can occasionally uh, make that still work. Like a Sand King Leshrac uh, ET is sometimes a, oh wait, no, not all three of those. Sand King ET is something we've sometimes been seeing. But.
tough life right now. OG looking amazing. Thompson still showing that Quaswex the way to go as they find the silence. Jarek shows off his new limited blink dagger, and Jonas has to run like crazy. He's dead anyway. He dies within two or three hits, plus a couple yep. of spells thrown out. Maybe their opponents were going to be fishing out looking for fights, and uh, the sentry is going to protect them there. So there's no buyback. And, oh, he actually just got it. Never mind. He just secured buyback. So he does have that. They can try to defend. They have hard. The, the rest of OG aren't here, so I don't know how hard they want to commit to this tier 3 tower push. I imagine they just siege it a little bit and back up. Yeah, probably now. Earth Splitter's going to come out. They're going to try to blow Vanna, but he has a heart of trash. Deafening Blast. They blow up the line. Now they're going to work on Frost as well. Good they roar. do get off the roar. And is in pretty deep at this point. He might actually die. The slip comes in. Beautiful kill. Down for 78 seconds, and that's the start of something. You're still down 14k, oh, but it is oh. something. Oh, oh, my God. Did they split really it? close. <laughs> Thompson apologizing there. Uh, as soon as the spirit comes out, Anna runs away from the tower, but the alacrity is the PL, so PL turns back in thinking, okay, I guess we're hitting. He gets disabled. That sets up the, dis the, the whole chain of initiation. Yeah. yeah, it was just a misplay using his doppelganger super early. I guess he was just overconfident because he used it basically to siege the tower, and then he didn't back up his main PL, so he just got caught out. It was a really nice roar as well from Jonas and Pond, catching the correct PL. That was yeah. not always easy to do, but... Link back in from Jerex. They get off the Atos. Meatball. Frost is dead. See you. Just when you thought it was safe. <laughs> it's the, not. The Nowhere is safe at this point. Man, I, uh, I, I've got to say, like the, the thing about OG that I'm most excited for with this game is not even necessarily the gameplay. Like We always knew that they're going to be good players. It's that... Like that, that energy that you feel like you can see from them. They're playing with purpose. They're playing fast. And, you know, they're spamming the chat while yeah. at each other. Like, it, it feels like they're in good spirits. That's something you like to see from a team. That's true. Another cool item uh, or cool difference for the way Jarex is playing is Skyrath Mage. He went for the Aiden perk, and he went for the Ancient Seal cooldown perk, which I, I actually like a lot this game if he goes for a Blink Dagger, because now he can just constantly initiate and kill his opponents. Yeah, a, f a fed Skyrath is absolutely terrifying, especially if you're behind this much, because you don't have any real way to protect yourself against this combo unless you're a core, right? So yeah. the Alchemist can Manta out of it, but what does everyone else on his team do? Yeah, they need four stats. The Lion's realizing it, and they're going to build into it for him. They die, yeah. I think, is what happens. That's, that's more than likely what happens, yes. And uh, at this point, they're, they're just going to let Roche happen. There's nothing they can do about this anyway. This is just dead, and it takes it so quickly. Aegis and Cheese. And now they will try to siege and finish the game off here with a 17k lead. <laughs> yeah, that heart is uh, that heart's pretty nifty. Uh, that's going to make this thing real hard to do anything about it. And MKB next. Like, to be honest, I, I think that he doesn't need to do anything except just survive and hit buildings. And the rest of the team has enough damage between them. Like, burn some mana, hit buildings. I think you just described every single Dota game. Just stay alive and hit buildings. Hey! There you go. That's how we it. win. Just kill those buildings. Is that what I've been doing wrong this whole time? I think you figured it out, Gabe. I think you're just on that next level. All right, Era has no man oh, already. He's and die. he's dead. Rip. Yep. Oh my god. He didn't even have to Spirit Vessel. Nope. Tempest Double's dead. They're going to take Rax. They can try to hold with Stomp and Magnetic Field. But they've lost a lot of their damage. If Earth Splitter will come out, but the Mystic Flare hits onto Jonas. Earth Splitter does hit in the Earth Spike, but he's still alive anyway. Bruce splits there. Jonas is going to die. He has no buyback either. And they're just going to song and just dive the fountain at this point. Meteor Hammer onto Frost. What did he do to deserve this? My god. He's dead. It's a good stomp. Maybe they can kill Anna, but he has ages, so probably not. He just backs up. He, all right, he's just going to dive well. Fine. <laughs> okay. Pale's a pretty good well diver. Yep. His heart's still regenning. Ryan's still dancing. OG is looking really good. Yeah, they're looking insanely good. GG. They had a really good fast-paced team with a very clear, I, I don't want to use a generic term, but it is a win condition, right? Like, PL is a win condition against Final Tribe's team, unless you are playing very, very high execution level Dota. And I think that they had some kind of idea that they wanted to pick this Alchemist to make sure that that PL win condition just wouldn't become a reality. Because when you have someone who's free farming in lane, like an Alk, you think to yourself, okay, this guy's going to get the items he needs to be able to fight. Because we have a secondary core uh, in our, our mid player as well. And we have this Arc Warden in the safe lane and a Beastmaster. So we feel like we should be able to take this late game. But the problem is top someone Quas Wex, and every idea they had just went out the window. They got ran at. 
I, I'm thinking about it more and more. And like that, that Arc Warden, I feel like the best part of his kit was that he could make sure that he could defend their towers when they're hitting them. But if your game plan is around like defending the towers, you're already behind in your game plan. Yeah. It's, it's a rough life. It, it felt like he, he did help the lane, I guess. But past that, it felt like Arc Warden didn't do anything this game yeah. to me. It's Just very, very difficult to play Arc Warden in general. But then you pair it with a mid player who says, I also need all the creeps. Right. It's... Like I said, it was a kind of an interesting idea to go for that play. It's an easy lane for him, but there yeah. is a thing past the laning phase, and that's what they learned that game. And Elk was also off map. It wasn't just like, I'm going to hit creeps. It was like, I'm going to hit neutral creeps. Yeah, which that, is that makes even it even worse, because then yeah. almost nothing is happening on the map. And then OG sits around being like, all right, what do we want to do next? Uh, OK, we'll go gank here. We'll go gank here. We'll pressure this lane. And instead, he's sitting in the jungle being like, uh, I guess I have to go fight here. Or I guess I have to go defend this lane. Um, it's, it's just really bad if, if he's on the defensive. If he, even if he's like a, a hard farming core, but he rotates lanes, like if it's like a Dragonite, he leaves a lane, goes and pushes top, that's better, even if he's still focusing a lot on creeps. Um, so I definitely agree that it was a, a little bit too many, too much farming there. Man. Bless. They come out stomping, OG do. I mean, they crushed it. I, I thought this was going to be a big match. The final tribe, OG, looking to be two of the top competitors in the qualifiers, and OG just looked like they were on another level. I know a lot of it yeah. was that draft that we talked about, but still, that was pretty incredible play. That was a good game. Yeah. It well, uh, looks like we have Kingdra and Alliance yes. is going to be the next match in a moment. So. I, I don't know if we're actually going to be taking a break or if we're just going to go straight into it. Yeah. So we'll just throw it to a break, I believe, real quick, and then we'll jump into the game as soon as it's ready. So stick around, guys. We'll be right back.